For the last 10 years, I felt increasing pressure to stop shooting film and start shooting video, but I've never understood why. It's cheaper to shoot on film, it's far better looking, it's the technology that's been known and understood for 100 years, and it's extremely reliable. If, like me, you grew up shooting digital and never had the chance to play with an 8mm film camera through summer, then film stock can be quite intimidating, as there is just so much to consider when choosing one. Do you want daylight or tungsten? Are you shooting in Super 16 or just 35? It can just be so confusing to newcomers, so today, I want to simplify it. I'll be covering what I think are the two basics that you need to know when starting out, and that's the size of the stock as well as daylight versus tungsten. Simply put, the sizes are the size of the film. For example, in a 16mm stock, the film frame is 16mm wide. But to get more into it, we need to start at 8mm film. Now, if you've ever listened to an interview of a director that grew up in the 70s or 80s, then you'll note that they spent a lot of time playing with either 8mm or Super 8mm film. And this is because it is classed as the home movie format. It's the cheapest of the stocks, you need minimal equipment, and it was widely available. Next, we have 16mm, and this is where we start to see feature-length films being shot. A recent example being Red Rocket. Before the surge of digital, this was a popular option for new directors to shoot their projects, as it was cheaper than 35, needed a lighter camera and smaller crew. There are, however, two other versions of 16mm film, Super 16 and Ultra 16, with the latter being a DIY version of the former. The most well-known film stock today is 35mm, and if a film is shot on film, it's likely to be shot on this. But why is that? Well, it's down to the fact that it can capture a larger image with less grain. Well, depending on the stock you choose. There are also multiple formats of 35mm stock with an Academy version, a widescreen version of course, a Super 35 one, VistaVision and many more. After its downfall in the late 20th century, 65mm stock has actually seen a bit of a comeback in the past decade, with films such as The Master, Dunkirk and The Hateful Eight all being shot partially on 65mm. Now this is almost the highest resolution film format there is. It was first projected around the same time as all of the other stocks in the 1890s, but it's pretty much just been reserved for epic films. Finally, we have IMAX, and it's very similar to 65mm, but with one major difference. It's shot using 15 perforations as opposed to around 5. But that's going into very confusing territory, especially for a beginner, so that's a topic for another video. I do have a video all about IMAX though, so I'll link that in the top right corner and description below. Now, whenever you see a film stock name, it has either D or T at the end of it. For example, Codex Vision 3 250D or 200T. But what's the difference? Well, to start, D stands for daylight and T stands for tungsten. Now, the most basic way to explain the difference is that daylight has a slight blue tint to it, whilst tungsten has a slight orange tint, which has always confused me because whenever I read tungsten, my mind immediately thinks cooler, and I've had to teach myself that it's in fact the opposite. But to go more in depth, daylight stocks can be used pretty much everywhere, and they will look good pretty much everywhere. And this is because daylight is natural light, unlike tungsten, which is artificial light. And before LEDs came out, they were the most popular source of lighting, and even now, DP strive for their warmer look. And fun fact, tungsten gets its name from the tungsten filament inside of the bulb of a given light, with that light glowing bright orange, usually at a temperature between 27 and 3200 Kelvin. When you get down to the basics of these film stocks though, it's actually pretty simple. Daylight is usually used when the light in the scene is either daylight or a daylight balanced light, so when you want a cooler look, it's perfect. Tungsten on the other hand is pretty much for when you are using artificial light, and as tungsten lights were more popular, so was the stock. Now, at least for me, this is where it gets quite confusing, as you can balance daylight for tungsten and tungsten for daylight, whether it's using filters or stopping down. But that's too much for a simplified video, so if you want to learn more, I'll link one of my favourite sources for learning all about cinematography down below, cinematography.com. But if this video gets enough support, I'll of course make a follow-up. I like to keep these simplified videos short, but if you would like to learn more about film stocks, i.e. looking at VistaVision, what perfs are, or even different brands, let me know below. 
Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. You know what to do if you did. If you have a recommendation for an analysis, leave it down below. Thank you so much for watching and maybe I'll see you next time. Bye.